Well, it's Irish Day. Now I know I upload on a Saturday, but I wanted this to release on the 17th. Since I've already done a video on Father Ted, I didn't know what to do next. But then I thought while watching Adam and Paul, hey, why don't I review this and two other Irish movies? Before I start, I'd like to say these are all my opinions and I wish if you'd respect them. Anyway, with that out of the way, let's get started. Wait a minute! You shouldn't be here! That's better. This is the movie! Mrs. Brown's Boys is a TV show which has been going on for far too long. The first three seasons were alright, and some of the other Christmas episodes are pretty good. Oh lord, your son is about to be born! Brendo Carroll really needs to realise that he's been milking this series and made it a truly terrible show. Before it was terrible, however, he made a movie. And he certainly made a movie. So Mrs. Brown's stall is under threat of being taken away when she can't pay the tax bill. So at first they're playing a fund, but then she has to prove her aunt already paid it. Oh yeah, and then there's some Russian characters who don't want this to happen and who also want to build a big shopping centre in Moore Street. They're gonna have to get rid of the one next with for that. I'll start off with the bad stuff. Most of the jokes here just aren't funny. Hello? <laughs> That's so funny. The last time I heard that, I laughed so hard I fell off my dinosaur. Stop right now, all right? So if you haven't watched the show, it's apparently filmed live. So there's a few bloopers. And despite not being filmed live here, they include the bloopers. And also, like the show, they're not funny. Like one moment you could be feeling tension, but then they include a blooper. And you just think, oh, yeah. This is all fake. Also, this movie breaks continuity with the show. So, in season 2, it's established that Mrs. Brown's husband died when Catty was around 12. However, in the movie, he died when they were all babies. And it feels Brendan only wrote this so he could have this big plot twist in the movie. Now, this is a real minor complaint, but... How the hell do you get from town to Dumdrum, then back to town on foot? You'll only understand that if you're from Dublin. Also, I don't know if it's just me, but a lot of the dialogue in this movie sounds like it was dubbed over. To me at least, it sounds really obvious. I don't feel like I've done enough complaining on this movie, but I'm going to stop. It's time to talk about the good stuff, because believe it or not, there is some good stuff here. So while most of the jokes in the movie are pretty bad, I do feel like the ones which aren't big gags or have forced swearing are alright. Bless me, Father, for I have sinned. This box is already in use. When you get out, not until I've heard your sins. Father, I'm much more sinful than her. What? Like the character Tom Cruise, the lawyer, for example. Why you act like such a dick? That's Cruise spelled C R E W S, by the way. Tom Cruise, solicitor, C R E W S. I think he's one of the only characters not to swear in this movie, which is probably why he's one of the best. He ain't no Saul Goodman, but he's still pretty good. Is that uh, Irish or English? Uh, Irish. Faith in Begora, a fellow potato eater. Also, the last 30 minutes aren't bad. It succeeded in being funny and it's directed pretty well. I'd also like to give a mention to the soundtrack. All the songs chosen here are such bangers to listen to and some of my favourite songs ever. Now, onto my favourite part of the movie. This is totally biased, but there's something about this movie and I love it. This movie feels like a love letter to Dublin. When watching this, you can really tell just how much Brennan loves the city. The drone shots of Dublin are out of doubt the best parts of the movie. 
and I love how many people of Dublin got to be in this. Like the scene on Dolly Mount Beach, the people watching Rory were actually taking a walk on the beach and were allowed to be a part of the movie. So, in final thoughts, this isn't a good movie, but it's not terrible either. It's just okay. 5 out of 10. Basically, when our forefathers founded this country, yeah, they, they made rules, like, if you're younger than 16, you're classified as a young offender, which basically means you can't get in trouble. So I was off the hook. For some reason, they thought that our brains weren't developed enough or something, like, you know, that we wouldn't know what we were doing or something. I know, it's stupid, isn't it? Thanks, they... Young Offenders is basically the Irish equivalent of the in-betweeners, and it's in no way better than it. That doesn't mean it's not good, because The Young Offenders is a great movie. It succeeds in everything Mrs. Brown's boys got wrong. It's funny, no bloopers included, and you feel tension when watching. Young Offenders stars Connor and Jock. They're... 15? They don't have great home lives, so when an opportunity for money arises, they travel down to West Cork. This is gonna be like one of those buddy movies. Two dudes setting out with a common goal. We'll argue about something dumb, fight and break up, only to come back together when we realize neither could do it without the other. Yeah, that's basically what it is, which kind of does dock some points, but the character's more to make up for it. Jock, for example, while he does bad things, you just can't help but feel sorry for him. He's the type of friend everyone needs. There's also Mairead, Connor's mom. You hate her when you first see her, but the movie is written so well that she's actually a character you sympathise with. But then there's the true star of the movie, Ray the drug dealer. So Connor and Jock steal his bag of sugar, and despite being disabled, he's such a huge threat. He's also probably the funniest character in the whole movie. His actor, PJ Gallagher, did an amazing job playing him. All the actors are great, especially Dominic McHale as Sergeant Healy. He plays the role of the crazy guard perfectly and is a true highlight whenever he's on screen. One thing I really like about the movie is the fact that Jock steals loads of bikes, which feels real inspired. So, fun fact, Cork, the county the movie is set in, stealing bikes is actually one of the most popular crimes in the country. Right, I've said all the good things about the movie, but this isn't without flaws. As mentioned earlier, this is basically a buddy movie. As such, there's a tour that breakup, which honestly didn't feel needed. Also, how the hell do the boys not see the sugar falling out of the bag? Like, did they really not stop all the way back home? I don't know. That's a little far-fetched. Spy fact, this is still a great movie. It did really well and ended up getting a TV show, which sadly doesn't hold up compared to the quality of this movie. Young Offenders is a really good movie. A solid 8 out of 10. Oh, for fuck's sake. What's wrong with you? Some fuckers out there glowing me to this thing. So this is a rather forgotten movie. Like many Irish people I've spoken to haven't actually seen this. Which is sad because this is without a doubt the best movie on this list. Adam and Paul stars Adam and Paul and the movie is basically what they get up to that day. I absolutely love this movie because it doesn't sugarcoat anything down at all. Sometimes you do forget this is a movie. All the dialogue feels real and problems they face feel real. Even all the bad things they do feel real, since they are the types of people they are. These are things you expect them to do. They're racist, they're fierce, and they aren't afraid to do terrible things to people who don't deserve it. I say they, but it's mostly Adam. Paul actually has a conscience. Yeah, we can't leave him here. We didn't fucking touch him. Oh, come on. And does feel bad about what they're doing. This poster, I think, explains it very well. Adam is thinking of an idea with clouds appearing above. But then that same cloud is raining down on Paul, perfectly showing how all of Adam's ideas affect Paul. There's a lot of lore in this movie and you have to kind of piece it together yourself. Like the characters Adam and Paul never call each other by name, so you never actually know who's who until you Google it. You have to piece together their relations with this family yourself. With all the information you're given. 
despite this being a drama movie, it's also really funny. Lots of dark humour that many people outside of Ireland might not laugh at. Hey! What is the fuck? Sorry, I wasn't aiming at you. Why you throw this wheel? It was an accident. It was supposed to hit me. Sorry. For fuck's sake. My pants in my bag. All fucking milky. Yeah, why are you sitting so close to us in the first place? It's full of background humour too. Like this scene of Paul asking for a smoke. The guy says no. But then when he's not looking, the same guy pulls out a smoke. Gonna mention the poster again. I like how playful it all looks, kind of symbolising how foolish they are. Then you watch the movie and it basically confirms that. Fuck! Oh, fuck! I especially love the ending. In the end, Adam has an overdose and dies in his sleep. I love Adam doesn't get a big send off in the end. They don't show his death because he just doesn't deserve a big send off. However, Paul did. Once he finds Adam dead, he simply leaves Adam and it's left up into interpretation of what happens to him. It's nice seeing Paul separating himself from Adam since he truly was the one dragging him down. Gonna leave it there because you all should watch the movie yourself. You may all be thinking, isn't there any complaints? And no, there isn't. Adam and Paul is an underrated gem in Irish cinema and gets a well-deserved 10 out of 10. Well, I hope you all enjoyed that video. It was pretty nice taking a break from train content to instead talk about something from my home country. Thank you all for watching and happy St. Patrick's Day.